A few months ago, I reviewed the Vifly Short Saver Smoke Stopper, and it fast became one of the most useful pieces of kit that I use. And because it totally removes the anxiety of magic smoke and blown electronics when I plug a battery into my quads, it makes life really, really easy. And I'm sure it's saved me money. And now there's a new version with an awesomely simple feature I've been waiting for that makes it even more useful. This is the Short Saver 2 Smart Smoke Stopper from Vifly, and this is the Whirly Blow Channel. It doesn't really matter whether you've built your own quad or the latest ready to fly quad has just been delivered. Plugging a battery in for the first time can be a bit stressful. Sure, you can use a multimeter to check there's no shorts across the battery connector, but that doesn't tell you the whole story. And I've done loads of videos on this before. There could be any number of wiring or component faults just waiting to ruin your day. You could use a current limiting bench power supply, and I did a whole video on this last year. Or if you don't have one, you could build yourself a smoke stopper using a couple of XT60 connectors and a car bulb that acts like a current limiter. And although this works fine, it doesn't cut the current off completely. It just limits it. And if you try and use a polyfuse type solution for the same thing, it just doesn't respond fast enough to be 100% safe. But Vifly have released the second edition of this E-Fuse. It's an electronic smoke stopper. They branded the Short Saver 2 Smart Smoke Stopper. And it's designed to give complete protection against short circuits and overcurrent. And it's spec to respond to short circuits in three milliseconds and overcurrents in 10 milliseconds. And when it trips, there's no leaky voltage or current until it's disconnected. So it's like a switch. This input side here, where you plug a battery in, is completely isolated from the output side when it's cut off. So let's give this a try. What you have to do is plug a battery in this side. This is a 4S that I've got here. And this will work on anything between 2S up to 6S. And very conveniently, it's got an XT60 and an XT30 connector on this side, so it's good for whoops, as well as normal size five inch quads. And you can mix and match these connectors as well. So you can put your power on this side on an XT60 and take the power to your quad on that side with the XT30. Very convenient. So if you wait for this yellow light to go on, this is good to go. And by the way, this defaults to a one amp current limit, and that's a pretty good thing. But you can switch it to two amps with this switch up here. The blue LED just shows you when it's in two amp mode. And you can see all this on the reverse side of the PCB. There's this legend, this little table that shows you all the settings and what all the different meanings are for the LEDs on here. So to turn the power on, let me put that back in one amp mode. You just need to press this button. So let's plug this into a quad over here. Still got the yellow light on. Press the button. And excuse the noise. Uh, this has powered up this quad safely. The green LED shows you that it's power on the quad. And this button is new. It's something they've added from the version one to the version two, and it's massively useful. It means binding a receiver is just so much easier. It's just ridiculously simple. Generally, to bind a receiver, let's just turn that off a minute. What you need to do is press the bind button on your receiver, which will be buried down in here somewhere. Oops, that's my lost model alarm. Let's get, turn that off. So what you need to do when you bind a receiver generally is there'll be a bind button on your receiver. Well, mine's just down here. And what you need to do is press that bind button and then apply power. And if you're doing it with a connector, it's really, really fiddly. If you've tried it, you'll know what a sort of juggle and fiddle it is. And I've always used a switch bench power supply to make this really easy. 
but the addition of this button on the short saver really means you don't have to do any of that. So you just plug this in, yellow LEDs on, you press the button on your receiver down here somewhere, just press that button and there you go. The short saver just turns the power on between here and here, it just makes it ridiculously easily. On the original version, you also had to bridge a couple of power pads on the PCB to change the trip response time. But you can now do that on this as well directly. Just turn that off, unplug this, make it a little bit easier. So, oh, this stupid thing. I don't say that when I'm out in the field because I can find my quad. There we go. Right, so to change the trip response times and this is all labelled down here on this little manual that comes with it. You can change it from 3 milliseconds short circuit, 50 milliseconds overcurrent, you can have 5 milliseconds short circuit, 20 milliseconds overcurrent, and 7 milliseconds short circuit, 30 milliseconds overcurrent. And the way you set that is long press the on off button. And that's going into single blink mode, if you can see that. That means it's on the default setting, which is three milliseconds. And if you want to change it, you just press the button. There's two blinks. It tells you what it is down here. Three blinks. Press it again, and you're back to where you were. On the version one, there was a couple of solder pads on the back here that you had to bridge to change that. So I guess one thing we should do is check out what happens when there's a short. So at the moment, we've got power on the input side. This is running on the one amp setting. I'll plug that into my quad, nothing. There's no power on here at all. If I turn it on by pressing the button, these two connectors here have actually got power on them so they've got 16 odd volts just unplug that but what happens if you short out this connector which has got power on now you do need brave pants on to do this but I have done this before so I know it's perfectly safe I'm going to bridge out this battery no fuss no drama, you just get a couple of LEDs on there and it completely isolates this battery from that connector. It just works. Now, the price on this, ooh, let's get a little fair, is $12. Yeah, $12 is a stupid price. That's about eight pounds, which is great value. And even if you've got the original version, the power on button on this makes it worth buying another one whatever it'll save you money and it's going to save you tears in the long run now i really like this it's one of those incredibly simple but really useful products that comes along every so often and it's not going to break the bank as always thanks for watching and if you found that useful give me a thumbs up and leave a comment and if you want to see more like this remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when i post new content I'll see you next time.